Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, we're here uh, to discuss the MS-13 program uh, in, in Suffolk County. Uh, we're here to, to discuss uh, that program and what is real and what is pretend. Uh, and perhaps more importantly, we're here to discuss that how or by how uh, hiding the truth uh, or hiding the facts from the Suffolk County residents, uh, that serves uh, to keep them less safe rather than more safe. Uh, so before I, before I get into that MS-13 program, what's really happening, uh, I want to talk about my background uh, and my, and, uh, my uh, the, which makes me uh, able to talk on this uh, topic. I have been a prosecutor for uh, 26 years. Eleven and a half of those have been spent in the Eastern District of New York where I prosecuted MS-13 uh, cases uh, on, uh, on Suffolk County on, in Long Island. Uh, and during that period of time, I prosecuted hundreds of MS-13 uh, members for a variety of reasons. Uh, and during the course of the, those investigations over that 11 and a half year period, I got to learn about the gang. Uh, and uh, to prosecute the MS-13, you really have to understand what the gang is about and how unique the gang is. Uh, and first and foremost about the MS-13, the MS-13 is about murder. First and foremost, they're about murder. And that really makes them unique because uh, when you talk about other traditional gangs, Bloods, Crips, Mafia, drug cartels, uh, they, their purpose is economic. They engage in illegal activity and if they, in order to protect those rackets, they'll commit murder. But murder is not the end all or be all. Uh, with the MS-13, it's just the opposite. While they'll engage in illegal activities to fuel uh, uh, their existence, their existence is predicated on one thing, murder. Uh, they traffic in murder, uh, and they're all about murder. Their currency is murder. So when we were with the Eastern, uh, when we were with the Eastern District of New York, what we decided in how we were going to uh, uh, prosecute them uh, and curtail their activities, uh, what we were going to do was we were going to take that away from them. We were going to charge murderers with murder, uh, make them plead to what they did, uh, make them serve significant cases, uh, I'm sorry, serve significant sentences and end their, uh, the, the purpose for their existence. Um, and uh, that's precisely what we did. Uh, with regard to myself uh, personally, uh, I, while I was in uh, federal court, I prosecuted six, se uh, six separate MS-13 murders. Uh, I prosecuted the murder of 19-year-old uh, year Vanessa Argueta and her, her two-year-old son, Diego Torres, who were murdered in Central Islip. I prosecuted the murder of uh, David Sandler uh, that occurred in uh, Brentwood. I prosecuted the murder of Nestor Moreno uh, that was in... Um, Nassau County, and I prosecuted uh, the murder of uh, Mario Anton uh, Quijada, who uh, was murdered in the Rockaways. In addition to that, I prosecuted the murder of Esteban Alvarado Bonilla. Uh, and those were MS-13 murders. Uh, and I can tell you with regard to the existence of the MS-13, there are three rules in the MS-13. Uh, the rules of the MS-13 are number one, you must attack and kill rival gang members. You must attack and kill anyone who would cooperate against law enforcement against the MS-13. And you must attack and kill anyone who would oppose the gang or disrespect the MS-13 in, in any way. And each of those six murder victims that, that I, uh, I prosecuted uh, or the defendants that I prosecuted for those six murders, uh, each of those victims, they were murdered uh, because it was perceived by the MS-13 that they or someone they were with had, had violated those, those rules. Uh, and I can tell you, we, we prosecuted uh, all of those defendants for those, those crimes. Uh, we convicted them, and each of those defendants who went to trial are now serving uh, life sentences without the possibility of parole. So, um, uh, when I looked at that, uh, because I don't look, uh, I, don't, I don't think prosecutors typically look at things this way, but I went back through uh, my history in, in uh, MS-13, and, and uh, we ch I tried to determine exactly how many MS-13 murders we prosecuted. And uh, going back through the records, 
uh, which what I found was that uh, while I was in the U.S. Attorney's Office, I investigated, prosecuted hundreds of MS-13 members for their commission of over 50 uh, murders of separate individuals on Long Island. Um, and so what I've done is I've uh, prepared a list with regard to those 50 individuals. I prepared indictments, uh, press conferences, uh, uh, press releases regarding press conferences uh, that pertain to both the arraignment of those individuals and the sentences of those individuals. Uh, and that's, I think, important because the public can see uh, uh, what was done as opposed to what was claimed to have been done. Uh, so that's my background. So now let's, now let's look at the district attorney's program. Let's look at the current uh, MS-13 program in uh, the Suffolk County uh, District Attorney's Office. And I, and I think uh, what you have to initially uh, talk about is uh, the district attorney, uh, Tim Sinney, he's the individual who claims, self-proclaimed to have taken down MS-13. Okay. Um, First off, uh, no responsible prosecutor would, would ever say something like that because a gang is like a, a living organism. Uh, and you, we see what's happening uh, on the border, how it's undefended, how gang members are, 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 are pouring through the border. And um, despite our best efforts, the MS-13 is going to reconstitute itself. Uh, so you have to be vigilant uh, and you have to be on guard. Um, but over and above that, what is the claim that he is the man who took down MS-13? Uh, what is it based on? Well, I can tell you what it's not based on. I can tell you it's not based on any of those, those cases that I worked and those 50 uh, murder victims uh, whose rights I uh, seek uh, to uh, get justice for. Um, because I can tell you that uh, when we did those cases, um, Tim Sinney wasn't in the courtroom. He didn't prosecute those individuals. He wasn't in the grand jury. He didn't participate in the investigation. Those cases were investigated through the FBI task force, which was separate and apart from Suffolk County. We had some police officers, two I believe, who were assigned to, to, uh, the, um, uh, to the task force, but we investigated those cases through the task force, separate and apart. So if it's not uh, if, if that claim is not based on uh, what happened previously, well, let's talk about uh, what happened while he was, was in, uh, while he was district attorney in his MS-13 program. And uh, so let's look at that office. Let's look at that program. Uh, in December of 2019, there was a, a massive uh, uh, MS-13 takedown in the words of the district attorney's office. Uh, and they indicated a lot of things. They indicated that on the takedown take date on December of, of two, uh, 2019, they arrested 96 MS-13 members uh, and that there were uh, 200 murders, uh, 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 I'm sorry, there were 200 MS-13 members arrested in conjunction with this. And overall, there were 300 MS-13 uh, members arrested. So uh, taking that at face value, who are these people? What are their names? What were they charged with? What did they plead guilty with, uh, to? I didn't have those answers. We had the, the grandiose press conference, but no, no results. So we started to look at it, and we, we pulled the main indictment from that case, which, if you read the indictment, it talks about the indictment of 46 MS-13 members. And the introduction of that indictment says that those 46 MS-13 members, the price of admission uh, to that, uh, to, to the gang is two murders each. So you got 46 MS-13 members, two murders each, that's 92 murders. And then you read further and you say that they, that they eavesdropped on 215 phones for a two-year period. So you've got a two-year period, 215 phones, 96 MS-13 uh, members, the biggest uh, takedown in the history of the MS-13, a gang whose, whose sole existence, existence is, to, is to commit murder. So the next question is, well, how many murders were charged in that indictment? And the answer is zero. Zero murders were charged in that indictment. Well, how many, how many shootings were charged in that indictment? And the answer to that question is zero. No shootings were charged in that indictment. A lot of conspiracy, a lot of talk about committing crimes, no, not a lot of actual crimes. There was a couple of, I believe, barroom assaults, but no shootings, certainly no murders. So, uh, 
So what does that mean? It all sounds great, but who are these individuals? What are their names? We don't know because we haven't been given those names. We've been told that 300 bloodthirsty MS-13 members who engage in murder and violence were arrested. What were they arrested for? What did they plead guilty to? I don't know. I tried to dig. I tried to see MS-13 murder convictions that occurred during uh, the last four years, and I could not find one. I don't believe one exists. Now, the DA certainly hasn't told us, and I say that I, don't, I believe that there hasn't been one murder conviction because the other thing that's happening with regard to these cases is that they're being sealed. So the results of these cases are being hidden from us. So what you're seeing happening is you're seeing the splashy press conference, the names, uh, the numbers, uh, the incidents of, of, of what, was, what, was, uh, what was alleged to have occurred, but you don't see exactly what they pled guilty to. Uh, and that's concerning. Uh, we don't see one murder conviction. So, it, it's, so I'll, I'll tell you the way it works. So uh, just last week, uh, one, two out of the uh, individuals, uh, of the 96 uh, individuals who were arrested, were, were tried in, in Riverhead. Um, and if you look, uh, two of those individuals uh, were made, uh, not one, but two press conferences. Uh, one press conference in March and then the other press conference in December of 2019. And in that press conference, we were told of all the, the heinous things that these two uh, MS-13 gang members uh, were, uh, were, guilt, uh, were, uh, were guilty of, of commi committing. We were told that these two MS-13 members, now remember, two, S two MS-13 members, two murders each, that's four murders, that they were responsible for uh, three separate uh, uh, conspiracy to commit murder charges. I also know from law enforcement uh, sources that, those that uh, one of those individuals uh, had indicated that he was responsible for another murder. So you have all that background. The, the, uh, the trial occurs last week, I believe. Well, what are the results? Well, we don't know what the results are because the, uh, the plea uh, was, was sealed and the defense attorneys are under a gag order, they can't talk about it. Um, now, uh, of course, there are, there are good law enforcement reasons uh, sometimes for sealing cases, but what about all 300? Are there, are there, there, there are legitimate reasons uh, to, to seal all 300 of those cases? Uh, what about the 96 uh, that were arrested in December of 2019? All of those cases are sealed. What are the results? I want to know what the results are. If you look at my record, you could see it because I'll show it to you and it exists. I want to know what's happening in Suffolk County with the MS-13 gang program because what's happening is the district attorney's office are taking these MS-13 murderers and they're cooperating one murderer against the other and they're all pleading guilty to lesser offenses. Uh, people are getting out. Uh, MS-13 members are being released. The murdered victims of those, 90, those 92 murder victims, their rights aren't getting vindicated, their families aren't getting closure, and it's enough. It's enough. Uh, all I am asking, and I'm challenging the press, find out what are the dispositions on these, uh, on these murders. Um, so what, what I really want to know is let's look at, uh, at the program and let's determine for ourselves what is real and what is pretend. Um, because I'm going to see that there's, there's a whole lot of showmanship uh, and not a whole lot of results in court. Uh, and that calls me to really the reason why we're here. Uh, this is the second time that I've been uh, at this, uh, the park. The first time I was at this park was after the, the murder of, of Justin Livacora, Michael L Lopez, uh, Jorge Tigre, and Jefferson Villalobos. Um, and their bodies were found just, just behind us. Um, the MS-13, the tree line was much more pronounced back then. The MS-13 members came out of the, the tree line. Uh, there was one victim who managed to escape. The other four were set upon uh, and they were, they were butchered to death. Uh, the interesting part about that is um, just prior to that, uh, the, the uh, 
district attorney who was police commissioner at the time had a, a typically grandiose press conference in which he had the, the entire power of the Suffolk County PD arrayed uh, before the press. He had, uh, uh, he had a helicopter, he had horses, we even had a tank, he had all the uniform personnel. Uh, and, and he said uh, to the MS-13, he put them on, on warning, we're coming for you. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, the MS-13 didn't get that message because just a couple of days later, uh, the, the tragedy in this park ensued. Uh, so I have uh, a statement for the district attorney. Um, based upon this program, based upon what is actual and based upon what is not, based upon what is pretend, come November 2nd, the voters will be coming for you. Thank you. Uh, does anybody have any questions? So would all of this takedown and surveillance and did it, was there no indication that yet another murder was going to happen? Did, were there no wiretaps? Well, was there no effective well, follow-up? Well, so uh, we've heard, I've heard from the district attorney. Initially he said he thwarted seven um, uh, active uh, conspiracies to commit murder, meaning he saved the lives of seven people. He's later moved that up to ten. Uh, so my question to him is, okay, my question is the same. Okay, who? Who are the, def who are the defendants who, uh, who were actively about to uh, murder people that you thwarted? What are their names? Uh, and uh, who, are the two mur uh, murder who are the two victims that they murdered prior to the case? What are they charged with? And what did they plead guilty to? Because if that's true, they should all be serving substantial sentences. Uh, and I'm just not seeing it. Uh, and, you know, the thought that uh, you, you know, um, that that actually happened uh, is, is just more sh uh, showmanship, I would submit, because that's not, the way, uh, that's not the way life works. You can't suddenly go out and in one fell swoop uh, thwart 10 separate uh, MS-13 uh, murder conspiracies. You've you got to do a lot more investigation. And I, I, I would say, you know, I'm open to it, though. Show me. Show me the proof. Don't talk about it. Show me the proof. Uh, and I, I would just say that with regard to, um, uh, with regard to uh, wiretap investigations, there's, there's nothing wrong with wiretap investigations. Uh, it is a tool, but it can't be the end all or be all of your, your investigation. Um, and you know, what we see is we, have, we see this massive uh, MS-13 conspiracy case based on those wiretap investigations where people talk and you have conspiracies. But if you don't use other tools, for instance, if you don't have an uh, operating shot spotter to, to detect when the shots are being fired, you can't investigate those cases and make it a part of your, your case. If there are, if there are uh, drive-by shootings that are occurring, you got to go out and you got to work search warrants. Uh, in which uh, you, you get the materials from the car and you're able to link up the various MS-13 members with the drive-by shootings. And so what you do is you don't have just an, uh, an indictment that has talk. You have a, 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 an indictment that marries uh, talk with action. And the action is what, uh, what gets people high sentences. That's what we did in the, uh, the federal government. And that's what I did with, in Brooklyn when I was a federal prosecutor. And I charged gang murderers with murder. Okay, you have to charge people with what they do. If they are murderers, you must charge them with murder. That's not being done. You're talking about all these uh, the cases that are being sealed. Now you say there are good reasons, but if it happened then that many wouldn't, I mean, my, my suspect would be that that would lead you to the higher up if you've got the conspiracy and they're talking. It's not maybe just one person that pulled the trigger. You're gonna have some true higher up in MS-13. Well, Where I, is that? I, I would say if you, you're talking about this massive, massive, alleged massive conspiracy case with all of these, these, these cases thwarted. Um, you know, the public has a constitutional right to know what is going on. So there are, law, there, are, there are law enforcement reasons for sealing a case. In other words, to keep people safe and if, if, if an investigation is ongoing. Uh, our, our case in, in, the, uh, in the federal system was ongoing, but we still adhered to the, you know, the public has a constitutionally guaranteed right to be kept informed of what's going on. Okay, so what we did in the federal system, we adhered to that standard. And although we kept our witnesses safe, we actually provided 
thousands of documents and documentation of all of these murders uh, that we committed. Uh, he has no documentation. And, and to have 96 individuals who were responsible uh, responsible for, or 46 individuals are responsible for 92 murders and not have one, uh, uh, one unsealed plea that, that, that you could look to. Uh, it just, it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't seem like uh, that, could, that could ever have properly occurred. Is there some fair number where you would expect X amount of cases to be sealed, or how many did you seal when you were prosecuting? Well, I mean, if you look at all, all the, ca the cases that I sealed, you know, I, 50 murders, you're talking about, out of the 50 murders, uh, you're probably talking an average of, you know, six or seven uh, defendants attached to those those murders. Plus, in addition to the murders, you have other non-fatal, like uh, gang, you know, gang violence, drive-bys. Uh, so you have probably, we would take them down as part of like a crew. And then you would have like maybe one or two cooperators, but you would have, you know, 15, 16 uh, defendants that you, and of course the cooperators, no one, no, no one hears about, but the individuals who are actually getting punished, the murderers who are being prosecuted for murder, you can see all those. Because there's no, if a person, uh, if an MS-13 member pleads guilty to a crime, uh, there's no legitimate re and he's not, and he's not cooperating, there's no legitimate reason to seal it. And it's, that's especially the case when, in the and when we did cases, if we wanted to seal it, we sealed it from beginning to end. We didn't have a, a splashy press conference in which uh, uh, we talked about all the bad things that happened and then uh, gave a favorably, favorable disposition in secret. All of it was, was, was kept sealed. Uh, you can't split the baby like that. There's no legitimate law enforcement reason for doing that uh, over and over and over again. So I, I would say that's clearly improper. Anything else? Thank you.